So to complete this project, you're going to need um, two small pieces of wire. I like red and black. Um, two holders for CR2032 um, flat batteries. Um, some just some regular silicone and some heat shrink it's what I've got to an inch and a half and it worked awesome um, and you're also going to need two CR 2032 batteries this is enough material to do both the front and the back TPM now, obviously you're also going to need a soldering iron a chisel to pry out some of the um, acrylic and things like that. There are other U YouTube videos on people digging out um, their TPM material. And so take a look at more than just this. Look at those two. Uh, I like the chisel because the chisel cuts um, as opposed to just kind of pries. It's more of a surgical tool. So these are the replacement batteries, and just so you know, there's only one for each TPM unit. So this is enough to do the whole bike. The reason I have them both there is because I want you to see there's the positive side and the, and the negative side. The negative side has the lip. Well, when you look at the battery that's in there, right, you just have to be, have to be careful because there's a lip. Right, but don't be confused. That's actually what's up, and it's the positive side per the multimeter. Here's the other side, and you can see it truly has a lip on the other side. So um, be careful taking this out because the tabs on the top and on the bottom are tack welded. Um, and so I'm going to replace that with the... Um, with the um, deal, and as you can see, I put it on a. I took a belt ender very carefully and just and just um, wiped out the the sides because the sides are um, it's too big to go in there. So by wiping out the sides, um, we can get it so that it works, right? Okay, as you can also see, the tabs come from the area where the valve stem is. So the tab comes, um, if, if you're looking at it this way, right? On the right is the positive, and on the left underneath is the negative. So I use this small screwdriver. I use the chisel actually to very carefully take this off. This is about finesse, not force. Um, then I took the, so the battery will come up, and then I'll end up working this tiny small screwdriver to take the tab off the bottom. All right, so here's the front TPM. Um, and as you can see, um, it's the, exactly the same as the back. It comes off the same as the back with the um, screw. You just take that off and it comes off. When I put the rear back in, I put a little bit of silicone around the edge of this um, just to ensure that we get a really good seal. Um, not a lot of silicone, just a little bit. Um, so here's the battery um, taken out. And, and by the way, what I used was a small, thin, sharp chisel. Um, it seemed to take things out properly, but you do have to watch that you don't um, whack it. And it's not a bad cut. It's just ble it was bleeding a lot. So here are the tabs off. I'm working on getting this other one out. And I'll go back through and do the, uh, and, um, do the same operation as I did at the back. So as you can see, negative tab down at the bottom, positive tab at the top. Um, be very careful as you're taking these apart. Um, don't get overconfident as you're moving through it uh, because you don't want to do any damage to the bottom of the, uh, the board, which is probably underneath all of this. Um, you can see where the battery fit uh, when they poured in the acrylic. So I'm going to remove a lot of that so that, that um, the battery... Um, holder can set in there. So as you can see, after uncovering the tabs, um, I've cut them off so that I can just solder the wire 
to the tabs and the tabs won't come in contact with each other um, once everything's put back together. And there's the modification after a quick trip to the belt sander and as you can see it fits in. Also, the pins on these battery holders, if they're sticking straight down that's going to take up room that you don't have so you need to very carefully bend them over um, and I do this before I solder to them and then tin them when I'm done um, the tinning will give a little bit of added strength back um, and um, it, it's you're not bending the solder too So here's what the um, bottom side of the battery container looks like with the bent over. Notice that I bend them um, in a direction inward so that I can solder wire to them and the wire isn't going to stick out past the end, especially on the positive side. That's the negative. Um, away from the tweezers on the left is the negative. Also, when I solder in here, um, I take either a pair of forceps or uh, these are these can also be users so either forceps or spring tweezers something to get a hold of the metal but not near the end but be, but close to where it goes into the acrylic so that it acts somewhat as a heat sink and absorbs some of the heat before it goes to the board because I don't want to do any damage to the board. So as you can see, the tabs, I've cut them down and I've put solder on the tabs. So this one here, this is the negative tab that was on the bottom and this is the positive tab that was on the top when we removed it. Okay, and then over here I have, this is the upside down of the um, battery holder because I've soldered on a wire for positive and a wire for negative. Um, and I've also put liquid um, tape on both connections so that it's not going to come in contact with anything. Um, I may, in fact, take a piece of, um, cut a piece of, of shrink wrap and just lay it in there so that there's a barrier between, between these and the bottom of this just to be extra sure. Um, and I also, I'm looping the wires so that there's enough room to be able to easily remove this whole thing and replace the batter if I have to, because it's kind of a pain to get it in and pry up, although with the sides off, I'm sure that'll be much easier now. So I've cut a piece of heat shrink, um, and then I've cut it so it's just a single layer, and I've laid it in to the bottom, and it's, um, I cut it a little big so it goes up the side slightly, because with the heat, I imagine it'll get smaller, and I don't want it to get too small. Also, this just goes right down in there, right, so that it's going to be packed down in there, and I'm just going to slide a piece of heat shrink over the end, right up to it, and heat shrink it closed, and I'll probably put some silicone around the end of the heat shrink just to be sure, but I don't want to put anything inside that will just cause me a problem later. Um, I know lots of people use hot glue. I'm not a huge fan of hot glue because there's heat inside the tire and has the potential just to be messy. Um, and so I don't like that. So there's the heat shrink partially slid on. Um, I took this quick video because there's a barcode there that you, you may need those, those numbers later. Um, and so what I did was take a picture of them and I'll stick it on my um, digital files so that I know that it's the rear TPM serial number. So there's the heat shrink pushed on. And let's go see how good a seal it does. Okay, so heat shrink is on. Um, this is the second time I've heat shrinked one. I did the rear first. And so what I did was this is was slightly bigger and I heated the end closest to the valve stem and then pushed it on further.
keep making sure that it stayed well away from the um from the seal that rubber seal and again i'll put silicone on that when i reinstall it I'll also make sure that you stay away from the air fill hole you don't want to block that um and then the final thing is um notice that here this has got a little flexibility in it so when i do the silicone i'll put silicone right across here so it'll it'll cover this and cover this easy to peel off when i have to replace a battery but it also makes sure that no moisture or anything else gets inside the um the sensor and the next morning after the silicone is dried so now i have a really good seal all the way around be careful with silicone that you don't fill a hole or get silicone in the hole so where the air comes in